Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your YouTube Elmer. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. Let's say you're putting up a dipole, a beam, a hex beam, a quad, a yagi, a quaggy, it's a quad and a yagi. Let's see what else. Um, maybe a vertical, maybe an elevated vertical. What's one thing that you really need to do in any of those antennas? And I intentionally left off N-fed wire antennas. What do you need to do to the coax at the feed point? You need to put in some kind of a common mode choke. And there are lots of ways to do that. A common way is to snap on beads. Beads that look a little bit like this. And they snap on to, uh, this one goes on to RG213 or LMR400. Um, question is, how many of these do you need? One? Ten? Twenty? Thirty? Let's give it some perspective. These are five bucks a piece. Five dollars. If you're putting up a dipole, you might have more money in these than you do the, uh, the wire for the dipole. Also, if you're putting up one, um, and you have snap-on beats, make sure that you use, boy, I learned the hard way, uh, the right size coax and bead combination. You don't want it to be um, something like this where you've got uh, our, a coax and it's sloppy. It needs to be relatively tight to the shield. But why do you need to do that? What, what is that about? What, what do they do? What's, uh, what's the function of those ferrite beads? Um, you may have been told common mode currents, common mode choke, a choke. Sometimes it's called a ballon and it's not a ballon, it's uh, a choke. So it's a choke at the, uh, on the feed line and you place it at, at the feed point to the antenna. You can put more where it comes into the radio room. Um, there are other spots where you could install uh, ferrite beads. So with that in mind, um, how many do you need? And what do they do? Do you snap those things on ladder line? The answer is no. Um, and what do they do? And coaxial cable, coaxial cable. What is, what is coaxial cable? What does that mean? Why is it called coaxial, coaxis, coaxial? Coaxial. What does that mean? Um, and what are common mode currents? What, wh where do they come from? So let's take a look at a couple of drawings I did. They're not great, but here's my drawing. But hopefully um, it'll make the point. Um, this is coax, coax over here on this side. And coax is made up of a couple, about four things typically. It can have a jacket or a covering, could be black, could be gray, could be white, could be any color, could be red, or not at all. Um, next in line, if you cut through it, is the shield. Shield could be corrugated metal, copper, could be um, could be like an aluminum tube. Uh, could be a braid. Um, could be braid in a foil. Could be a couple of braids. Could be braid along with some wires. Next, typically in line is the um, uh, dielectric. The dielectric is the insulating material between the shield and the center conductor. Um, th it could be. Uh, could be even be just none, could be air, could be little spacers in here that hold it in place. Then there's the center piece, which is the center conductor. Could be aluminum, could be aluminum with a copper coat, could be an aluminum single solid wire, could be stranded wire, could be stranded wire, could be fine stranded wire, coaxial, coaxial. So you got two conductors in kind of a weird situation in that the center of those conductors, the center of the s center conductor 
and of the braid is the same point. It's a common point. It's a common axis. It's a common axial. It's a common axle right here. So it's coaxial. So the shield and that center conductor share the same center point right dead center in the coax. Now that shield which is represented over here in another kind of poor drawing is um, interesting in that sometimes somebody will say well um, there are uh, two well they'll, they'll ask the question and the question is, is this the question often gets asked and that is how many conductors are in a typical coax cable and the guy will say well there's two and the head of the uh, discussion group will say no 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 there's three and my answer to that is no there's two they're just two two conductors um, there's the center conductor and the shield and on most of our stuff it's it's braid okay, it? and you can have currents flowing on the inside of this braid and a different a different current a different current flowing out here a common mode current flowing on the outside of the shield on the outside your RF to the antenna is flowing on the inside reflected stuff and other things going on can come back to the radio room on the outside of the shield to measure that I built a box and this is what the box looks like and let me see if I've got a better drawing but uh, the box has uh, two BNC connectors at the bottom two on the side and two SO239 at the top and I'm looking to measure common mode current, the current that flows on the shield. And I'm going to put it on the shield, and then I'm going to use ferret bees and see how much of a reduction I get. Let's see if I can come up with a better drawing for that little box. Okay, so um, took a quick time out. Uh, this now has changed, but this was the initial uh, wiring of that box. So two BNC connectors here, they go up to two BNC connectors here, both conductors. Uh, and I was using a coax cable, I changed that. And they go to here, and then I pick up just the center conductor and run it to the outside of this SO239. Yeah, I wire it backwards. There's no connection to the center conductor, just the outside conductor, and that comes from this. There's also a wire that goes across here. These two need to be at the same spot. I ended up changing this just a bit, but this is the idea. And these are here for uh, calibrating uh, the response from the VNA. So I'll be putting on uh, the um, um, short, the um, uh, open, the 50 ohm load, uh, the two 50 ohm loads, and also the loop that will go from one side to the other. So that's how I'm going to measure common mode currents. I'm going to put a coax cable on here after I get this thing calibrated. And it's going to have a loop. And I'm going to snap on beads. And I'm going to try to determine how many beads it takes um, to reduce common mode currents. How many beads do I need to do that? Um, and that's a question I've asked for years and haven't gotten a good answer to. Um, and it's one it's a difficult one and and that's the reason why um, so there so I've got here's the box and I put uh, right angle connectors on so I could do the loop I did a five six five foot loop uh, these connect to these directly so I can calibrate the box the center conductor here goes one goes to here on the outside and one goes to here on the outside fairly simple device but it it's tricky to wire this thing. Um, and this idea was from Mark and uh, at um, Halibut Electronics. I'll give a link. I, I just ordered a box from him and when I get it I'll wire it up and I'll show it to you that does this and it does it in a better way than I did um, which, is <laughs> which isn't saying much. Um, but it did work for me. Now the question was how many ferrite beads do I need? 
do you know how many ferret beads I need? How many ferret beads do you need if you're putting up a um, NA3 Cushcraft or a T33 or whatever? Um, how many beads do you think you need to put on the coax? Assuming that the antenna has pretty much a match at the feed point to the coax, it's the antenna's adjusted so it's 50 ohms. Could be a beta match, a hairpin match, could be uh, um, some kind of uh, gamma match. How many beads do you need? And I didn't know the answer, so I did the test with this box and I found it kind of interesting. And I'm just going to run through it real quick. Oh, okay, so the Nano DNA uh, provided a, um, a graph, if you will, and I grabbed uh, from let's see, about 18 megahertz to about 21 megahertz because that was the straightest line. And so let's add one bead and see what happens. So right now, uh, let's call this zero. Could be minus one because of here, but let's, in fact, uh, let's see, let's uh, just figure this is one a step of one right here to this box. All right, let's go through adding beads. All right, so that's no beads and we'll call it zero. dB change, that's about five. I've got two beads, about five dB for three beads. Uh, four beads is about eight dB. Five beads, six beads is uh, about 11, 12 dB, six beads. Seven didn't make any change. Eight. And really that's sort of the end of it. So um, so uh, that's the answer they came up with, about seven or eight beads. Um, it may change uh, with what you're doing. Also, uh, make sure that, again, that you have the right size coax for that particular bead, or put another way, that you bought the right bead for the, that particular coax, um, and that it is a good mix of beads. These were 31 mix, but some of these, um, they didn't work right. Uh, some were just dead in terms of performance. I've never seen that before, but I didn't have a good way of measuring it. So now that I do, I found that some of these beads don't work. Uh, so it's worth checking them ahead of time with something like um, the box that, uh, that, I'm, that I've ordered. I think it may be just the circuit board. It may be that I have to put a box around it. Anyway, so the answer is a safe number uh, I'd say 10. Uh, just round numbers, uh, because of other experiments I did, I would go for 10 beads and uh, just get 10 beads and put them on the coax. Again, the right size bead. It's 91 degrees in here. The temperature outside is 104. In the prior video, I had the air conditioner running and people were complaining about the noise, so I shut it off. It's now 91 degrees at uh, 519 in the uh, evening. I'm Jim, W6LG. Thank you for watching. If you have a question, post it below. This is a very complicated subject. There's no easy answer. And in fact, I found it was hard to make that video and try to boil it down to, to something that made sense. If you haven't subscribed, uh, please uh, hit the, subscri the uh, subscribe button. I'm Jim, W6LG73. See you the next time. Thanks for watching.